Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics here today uh, and we're going to discuss motorcycles that have a pull in them that when uh, the rider is not putting any input into the handlebars the bike wants to drift one particular direction um, and I'm going to kind of give you a little history and some general overall lessons on stuff you may or may not know about and then give you some explanations as to things that might cause this and then uh, further kind of dive into um, some model specific stuff with the uh, latest generation of Honda Goldwing. So uh, in general, there's very little that can be done to align a motorcycle. Now, most people are familiar that alignment is an actual whole entire industry in the automotive industry. And that's because uh, an automobile uh, has multiple angles of adjustment for its front suspension and steering system. So the wheels can be turned uh, vertically and tuned and adjusted, and then they can be tuned in and out, particularly normally in, a little bit like plowing snow skis. So um, I call that tow and tow in a little bit, helps the car go straight down the road. Uh, so there's caster and camber. These are different angles, the angles of side and forward and backward for the wheel. Um, so a car's steering system is very, very complex. By uh, And then there's two sides that have to interact together. Uh, so most people think, oh, wow, I get my car aligned. I should, my motorcycle is misbehaving. I should just go get my motorcycle aligned. Well, there really isn't anything to align on a motorcycle per se. Now, um, originally, uh, the most common cause years and years and years ago was due to most motorcycles were chain driven and you actually do align your rear wheel uh, in the swing arm. If you misalign the rear wheel and had it pointed out, well, obviously the motorcycle would constantly be try the rear would, would constantly be trying to drive out from under the motorcycle in one direction. So that was a tunable thing and really, really good mechanics. And in particular racers, they would take the time to measure, um, from the swing arm pivot, the place where the swing arm actually moves up and down from that pivot to the rear axle to make sure everything was, uh, they were square. Those are your two critical uh, places in the rear of the motorcycle that need to be functioning together. So having the rear axle parallel to the swing arm pivot means inherently that the wheel is perpendicular to the swing arm pivot and that bike will go straight. So now there's, there's, a couple of main points on your motorcycle that are really important. That's kind of the location of your front axle, rear axle, swing arm pivot, and then the vertical steering axis, your, your steering head. <clears throat> now, um, by the nature of the construction of a motorcycle, there's no way to misassemble or misalign the front end of the motorcycle to somehow cause the front wheel to be tilted or canted or, or anything. Um, you know, all kinds of myths of if, you know, one forks aren't exactly the same height than the bike will turn or whatever. None of that has anything to do with anything. If you put the forks in at a different height, a telescopic fork, it's just going to put more preload on one fork spring. It has nothing to do with nothing. will never cause an alignment issue. Anybody who says that doesn't understand motorcycles, just ignore them and they're wrong. So that stuff being said, even if you're not even that good about assembling the front end of your motorcycle, there's really nothing you can do to misalign it. So having said that, you know, even and even a good twist was a problem with forks. But again, if you have straight triple clamps and good components, when you slip them together and tighten the hardware, it'll just be right. It's not a you don't need special tools or equipment. It'll, it'll just work out. <clears throat> um, so now but let's move on. Because um, we're going to talk more about shaft drive motorcycles. Um, uh, finding uh, motorcycles um, on a production basis uh, that um, with with uh, pulls, an actual pull to one side, um, is not common. And now, if there was an actual model of motorcycle that was universally defective, that would be known and recognized, and the manufacturers would have to interact and deal with that. But what you you're going to find is you're you're finding this one motorcycle in a thousand or whatever the number is, whatever the percentage is, that the owner has a legitimate problem with the bike pulling. Now, uh, the old school first thing is going to come right out of anybody's mouth when you said when you say my motorcycle pulls, 
And I'm going to tell you 90% of the time the motorcycle will pull to the right. Um, uh, when they say, oh, my motor your motorcycle pulls, they're going to tell you it's because of the crown in the road. So most modern roadways are built with this sort of a shape to them so that in, in case of rain, water sheets off to the side of the road, doesn't form puddles in the center and create hazardous situations for cars and motorcycles to run through puddles that they're unaware of at high speed and hydroplane crash and kill everybody. So, yeah, you know, roads can be crowned like this. They can be, you know, a crown in this fashion. It doesn't really matter, but there's always going to be some method that the road is tilted to get water off of it. Now, uh, <clears throat> so you may notice if you believe that your motorcycle has a pull to the right, you know, some of the symptoms are, you know, you, if you were to let go of the bars, the bike will just start going one way. Now, I'll preface the one quick thing. If your motorcycle will pull one way and you do something and it starts pulling the other way, 100% of the time, that means the steering bearings are, the steering head bearings are too tight. 100% of the time, no questions asked. That's, um, that's called hunting. That's not pulling. So a bike that hunts is one that the steering is stuck. You adjust it and it's stuck the other way. So we're not talking about hunting. We're talking about a motorcycle. Everything is assembled properly and yet it still goes to one side. So now, um, a simple test to make sure that it's not, you're not riding. And by the way, it would take an extreme amount of crown in the road to make a motorcycle just want to kind of drift off to the right. But to eliminate that, you can do one of two things. One, as long as you're on a road where there's no oncoming traffic, simply cross over to the other side of the road and repeat the test. If your bike wants to ride up a crown, you, you have a legitimate problem with your motorcycle. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to start there. The other way would be a lot of highways are, are crowned at the median. You know, water's designed to run into the median and they have drainage from there. You know, just make sure you're on a highway that's shaped like that. You can see it with your eyes as you're looking at the, the horizon. Typically just move to the left lane and see if your motorcycle rides up to the right. So <clears throat> if you, if you have that situation, okay, so we have a problem and now they're going to keep, I made some notes actually. Um, let me stay on course here. So uh, old motorcycles, uh, a lot of problems came from, you know, spindly weak steel frames and spindly components. Um, but, uh, and then lower production quality and tolerance inspection. So over time, the frames became stronger, more rigid, and were um, more, better built in the factories and then had better QC. So the there is one thing and one critical thing in the cons in the uh, uh, that matters more than anything about the frame on your motorcycle is one diehard etched in stone rule that can't be broken. The steering head, your steering axis that your steering pivots on, has to be absolutely perfectly perpendicular to your swing arm pivot. So the axis your swing arm pivots on, your steering head has to be absolutely perpendicular to it, 90 degrees. If it's 90.1 or, you know, 89.9, whatever, you've, you've, it's not going to work right. You're going to start to have a problem. The more that's exaggerated, the worse it gets, okay? Now, <clears throat> we would assume that all motorcycles are built with that square. Um, well, the truth is, uh, you know, metal is, is not a, you know, is, is made by men. And men make the fixtures and the machines and the processes and the welding and the robots and all the stuff that build these things. So critical to how any welded part is, is, is finished and welded um, is how it's fixtured and then how it's allowed to cool and then how the metal is, you know, is given time to react. Now, some places, you know, and I'm certain that all of the major manufacturers know all about this. This is not any secret there. I'm not saying anything that they all don't know. And, uh, you know, it can be as simple as a process where they weld the left side of the steering head first and the right side second, and it causes it to move in some way. Well, they have a fixture that compensates for that. You know, they, they, or a process, they know how to tune the robots to do this much of that, that much of that, do it in this order. And then when it all cools and there's no stress in the frame and it's released from the fixture, it's welded in it'll be perpendicular and perfect. But I'm going to come back to, you know, uh, it's still metal made by men, weld machines, fixtures, programs, tools made by men, and they, 
they, it can not doesn't have to be perfect. Then a whole new set of variables comes in when, you know, in the modern era, era when motorcycle frames went from steel to aluminum. And now aluminum has its own whole entire set of circumstances and, you know, technicalities that, you know, people much smarter than me have to manage in order to create a strong, reliable motorcycle frame. So <clears throat> that's kind of a, just some FYI about what, what's involved in trying to just weld up a frame and have it come out of the fixture and still be straight or square. Um, now, um, so uh, I talked to you about how to check your bike if, if it actually does have a pull. Uh, <coughs> and uh, one thing to make sure of, sounds silly, but uh, excess weight in one side of a touring motorcycle, um, that, that's a problem. So putting weight outboard of the center line of the motorcycle will, can, will cause it to pull. Now, how much just depends on how much weight. So, you know, we'll have a guy come in and say, hey, my bike pulls to the left. And you go, okay. And the first thing we do is go hit the button on the left saddlebag. And then we pull out his U.S. Army Tank Command toolkit that weighs about 65 pounds. And we say, here, you know, here's your problem. Or, you know, or here, we'll uh, secretly put that tool bag in the right and send it out there and uh, try your bike. You know, hey, my bike pulls to the right now. Okay, well, it's your... U.S. Army Tank Command Toolkit. <coughs> um, so if you want to carry <coughs> enough tools to change the crankshaft in your motorcycle while traveling, I won't discourage you from doing that. It does, you don't have a lot of luggage space, but if you do, balance your tools left to right on the motorcycle so that your weight is evenly distributed. All right. So now let's say I have a motorcycle. I've taken everything out of it. I went out. I've tested it. There's no doubt in my mind that the motorcycle pulls. And we're going to we're going to talk about to the right. Um, that always seems to be, don't ask me why, the common way if the motorcycles are going to pull, they're going to pull. Now, I uh, also want to preface this by if you were to dig around in all in various forums, you're going to find that all manufacturers have this problem with some of their motorcycles and most models, some of, you know, this small percentage of the time. So this isn't a, like a Honda problem or a BMW problem or, a, you know, it's a Kawasaki problem. Each of these companies has their own issues with a motorcycle <coughs> um, that the owner believes pulls to one side. Now, um, given that your motorcycle is in proper working order, hadn't been crashed, um, all of these you know small normal variables, but and the motorcycle is in good working order. If it's not oddly loaded in some way, and you're on a, a road that doesn't have an excessive amount of crown. Uh, and your bike pulls to one side, there is one reason and only one reason that I personally know of, and that is your frame is bent. It is twisted. It did not come out perpendicular and square as I, as I described it absolutely has to when it was manufactured. So what you have is a frame, the steering head of your frame, your front wheel is out to one side, one side of the left, right? Left or right. Now, if your bike pulls to the right, it means your wheels out to the left. If your bike pulls to the left, it means your wheels out to the right. It's the only reason I know of is you have a twist in the frame of your motorcycle. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you a little demonstration of what that kind of looks like. I'm going to move this over here. So, in a normal motorcycle, I'm going to line my front wheel and my rear wheel on the edge of this black mat. So um, in this situation, I'm equally balanced and e equally uh, tippy in either way. It takes the same amount of effort to tip me off to the left as it does to the right. So now if you happen to have a motorcycle that has some t a twist in the steering head, it's not perpendicular to the swing arm pivot. <clears throat> if I put my foot out to the side, I'm representing a bike that has the, steer the front wheel contact patch out to the right-hand side of the bike. Well, I don't actually have to do anything to support myself hardly to keep myself from falling to the right. I can barely fall over even if I'm tilting my hips out and doing all kinds of things. But to tip to the left, I can just put my finger out in the air and, my, and I'll pull myself over. So this is unsupported and this, is a, this will make a bike want to pull, bike will want to go that way. This way the bike is resisting it. So the, the opposite effect, if you have a bike that wants to pull to the right, if you, most people are only paying attention to the pull, the opposite problem is it's really hard to get it to go the way that it 
that it doesn't want to go, right? So um, if you go out in a big parking lot or a circle, you can just ride along in a straight line and feel the effort it takes to make your bike tip to the right and tip to the left. So if you have a bike that pulls to the right, when you go out and try and tip it to the left, it will not want to tip to the left. You will have to force it off of what you would consider to be neutral to get it to turn left. To turn right, you can just put a tiny input and the bike will tip really fast, right? So that's another sign that your wheels are out of alignment. <coughs> now, they're not out of alignment this way because that's not how a motorcycle works and you're not gonna have that. Particularly on a modern shaft drive driven motorcycle, all of the pieces in the back bolt up and there are, is no way for them to become misaligned. The, the pumpkins on big heavy dowels, everything is, is the way it is and it, it can't be misaligned unless again, it's been catastrophically wrecked and we're not talking about that. <clears throat> um, so, only thing I know of, twist in the steering head. Okay, so now, um, let's talk about the, the requirements. What, what do you need to fix that? <clears throat> well, there's, the only way to fix it is to have the frame twisted back to a perpendicular state. Now, <clears throat> uh, there is a company that does this, um, and there's a couple around the world. You would have to check your country uh, for the specifics of, you know, who does what in your nation. But basically, it requires stripping the motorcycle down virtually to the frame um, with only kind of the engine remaining in it uh, because the engine is a stressed member in almost all motorcycle chassis. And then taking the frame, putting it into a giant steel uh, box, a jig, securing all of the major points of it, and then heating the frame and twisting the steering head back to where it's perfectly in line with uh, perfectly perpendicular to the swing arm. <clears throat> now, as you figured out, that is a lot of money to do that. A lot of money. Now, this, they do this a lot with sport bikes because people crash their sport bikes a lot. Um, you know, uh, and it's common practice. It's done a lot. But, uh, you know, anytime you've heated metal, softened it enough to where you can twist it, let it cool and go back, it's never going to be as strong as it was the, when it was originally made. So it's not something that I would recommend, <coughs> but uh, for, for a touring bike, if I had a race bike, race bike and I was out crashing it every weekend or whatever, I would do it then for sure. And, um, but we're talking about your touring bike and, uh, and, or big, big cruiser or something like that. So the cost to strip a gold wing down, uh, to the point where you could have the steering head aligned would, would be astronomical. And then the same situation why I developed the engine case guard when somebody takes this engine out, strips it all down to the last nut and bolt and rips it in pieces and tries to put it all back together and put it back in the bike, I don't care who you are, that bike will never be as good as it was the day it left the factory. Same goes if you're going to take all the electronics, all the fairings, all the wiring harnesses, radiators, tubes, everything off to get this motorcycle down to its bare frame so somebody could try and twist the steering head square, it will never go back the same. Um, probably the closest odds you would find is you know, somebody like our shop, and I can't think of anybody more than us that's had these bikes torn so far apart and put together all the time, like as a way of life here. Uh, you know, our guys, we could practically throw the hardware and the pieces into a box and shake it up and we could put it back together. There's not many places on earth that could do or have the reason to take a gold wing apart and put it together every day, but it, but it is something we do here. So, so having said that, the odds are low that wherever you are, where you live, there's nobody that's had the whole front of the motorcycle apart 200 or 300 times, um, never mind a thousand like we have. <clears throat> so not something I'm going to recommend. Um, if the, your, the pulling of your motorcycle really annoys you, the, um, the you know, uh, so let me, let's go on further. I, I hear all of, I've heard all this problems with BMW, problems with Honda. It always says we're trying to get the group together. We're having a class action lawsuit. We're going to go get them. And Listen, I, no manufacturer that I know of in my, uh, I'm 55 years old, going on 56. I've been in motorcycles since I was 15 professionally. I have never heard of one instance where one manufacturer ever admitted that any motorcycle pulled, even when the service rider rides it and says it pulls, when the mechanic rides it and says it pulls, when the service manager rides it and says it pulls, the manufacturers will never admit that. 
<clears throat> they will never assist you and they will never fix it. Okay. So it's very important that you understand what I'm saying right now. You, you're probably, if you have a bike that pulls, you're probably mad and you're probably upset. You're going to be more mad and more upset if you keep banging your head against the wall, uh, trying to get the OEM to fix that because they will never admit it. Because if they did, they would have to replace frames, you know, on everybody who had that complaint. And then it would also, at the modern era of the internet, anybody who has a, does have a legitimate pull, there's going to be a thousand people that since they have a pull and need to go immediately jump on their motorcycles, let go of the handlebars and see if their bike wobbles or whatever it does. So <clears throat> if your bike pulls, the odds are, you know, it, you have a tired shoulder, you're fighting the handlebars all day. This is going to be obvious. Okay. If you don't have a problem riding your motorcycle, then you don't have a problem. Okay. So now, um, so don't call a lawyer. Don't call Honda. Don't call BMW. Don't call nobody. Nobody's going to help you. You're going to waste your time. You're going to waste your money. You're going to be very aggravated. You're going to be upset. <clears throat> you know, uh, so a couple of options are slim. One is spend $10,000 to have your frame straightened and your bike will come back and it's not going to be the same. Um, not something I would recommend. If it really annoys you, the best you can do is sell that bike and get another one. That will be the, you know, typically the least level of aggravation that you're going to go through. Now, um, uh, in particular for the Honda Goldwing, we have a huge customer base with lots of Goldwings. I'm working on a product. It's going to be crazy. You're not going to believe what it is. But when I when we have it, <coughs> um, we believe we can take out, we can correct the Honda 2018 plus Honda gold wings that have a tendency to pull to the right. So that'll be coming soon. <clears throat> it won't cost a lot of money and it'll be kind of simple and crude, but we believe it works in our testing so far. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, also on to the specifics of 2018 and later Honda gold wings. Uh, when people look at it, so it's, it's, this is a, uh, a, a, a uh, twin control arm suspension system with a shock in it. The fork is not telescopic. It's nothing like any motorcycle that most people are familiar with, have ever ridden or seen. It acts, you know, completely differently. And then it has uh, steering with tie rods that go to it and such. Now, as soon as people see tie rods, they think car and alignment and, uh, you know, this is loose and that's why my bike shakes or does this or that. It's very important if you learn if you have a 2018 Honda Goldwing, that you understand what I'm about to say here. Nothing related to everything you touch from there to the tie rods has anything to do with the steering direction and uh, uh, the bike going pulling in a straight line or wobbling. Any symptom, all those, everything you see there, your handlebars, that little top bridge, and the two uh, tie rods, that is just remote control for the steering of the motorcycle. It has nothing to do with whether the bike goes straight and has nothing to do with whether the bike wobbles. Okay. So when somebody says, well, I'm going to adjust your tie rod to get your bike to pull the other way, they have no idea what they're talking about. They shouldn't be touching your motorcycle and they don't understand this motorcycle and its peculiarities at all. All it is, is remote control. So those tie rods, they're effectively exactly what your hands are on a traditional telescopic motorcycle fork. You're pushing and pulling the bars. Those tie rods are your hands on normal handlebars. If this were a traditional motorcycle, it would have a set of handlebars right through here <coughs> above the tuning fork. Okay. So where your tuning fork is, that is your steering head. That's where your bearings are or is related to your normal telescopic fork bike. This is where your bike is uh, uh, aligned from and where it's, you know, where the steering comes from. So if you have a factory tie rod that has slack in the, in the tie rod um, ball joints, which they all do um, with a factory tie rod, brand new on the showroom floor, the odds are 90%. It's already rattly. Okay. That, that skip, is just uh, because it's a cheap component on the bike. And it's not, uh, it will not affect this, the safety or um, in any way the 
bike, the bike's ability to go straight or wobble or any of that. It's just a nuisance to have that click in your hands as you're handling the handlebars. So uh, we have a tie rod for that, the tracks right tie rod, check that out, that fixes that little skip. But again, nothing to do with whether your bike goes straight or not. So eliminate all of that. Um, this bike, like any other motorcycle in the world, this is where it steers, this is where it's aligned from, and there's you know just no chance that this this is the actual anything in here is actually causing that problem. There's no way to twist it or misalign it. It's just a it's not the way it is. So let me see if I've hit all my points here I wanted to. All right. Don't call a lawyer, don't call the OEM, wasting your time, wasting your money, gonna get more mad. Uh uh repair only way to repair it. Pretty much take it to a frame alignment specialist, pay a shit ton of money, um, or sell the motorcycle. Those are the two. Selling the motorcycle is the shortest, quickest path to ending your pain, suffering, and aggravation and just buying another motorcycle. Uh, <clears throat> so um, that's what I know about motorcycles that pull to the right or, or to the left. Same thing. It's just a question of steering head. It's not, not perpendicular to the swing arm pivot. That's the cause. All right. So I hope you learned something here today. I'm sure there'll be some engineers. Get your engineer hats out. Get on your choo-choo trains and start telling me why I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I've only got 40 years of actually working on motorcycles and uh, suspension systems to to put, put my case forward, but uh, present yours. We'll be happy to listen to it. Anyway, it's Christmas Day. Sorry I've been away so long. Uh, uh, it's nice and quiet here, and so I've come in on Christmas to make some, make a few videos for you. <laughs> um, so please keep an eye on my channel. I am going to start pumping out more content here real soon. You'll probably get flooded with it here, and you'll say, well, now he's doing too much. But anyway, I'll try my best to get going again and uh, keep you up to date with cool info and topics for the Honda Goldwing. Uh, products from our company, people ask me all the time, where do I buy them? Traction.com. You've made it to the internet. You're that smart. All you have to do is get the rest of the way to Traction Dynamics. You can Google it. We're kind of famous, um, at least in some, in some circles. <laughs> so thanks a lot for watching. Please share, and don't forget to subscribe, and uh, we'll keep the great content coming.